Welcome back to the GSMC Sports Podcast. We are headed into our final segment of the day, talking about NBA contenders, and I will be giving my list of different tiers. I have three different tiers, and I have some honorable mentions, if you will, as well. But I think that there is a clear set of groups. Again, clear. We are still in early March, so a lot of things can change. But as it currently stands in terms of my confidence level with these different teams that they can make the finals and then win it all. The first tier I have are the Celtics and the Nuggets. Now, I'm going a little bit chalk for this one, but I do think that they are the clear-cut best teams in each conference. Now, as we saw last night, I'm not quite as high on the Cavaliers necessarily, but they are that both of these teams in the Celtics and Nuggets could be a little bit vulnerable if certain things don't go their way, if they don't correct certain mistakes. And I think that it's not foregone conclusions by any means that both or either of these teams are going to make the finals. But I think that they are definitely the class of the NBA in each conference it is far and away the most likely finals matchup the Celtics are the odds on favorite at plus 230 according to DraftKings for winning the finals the Nuggets are second at plus 450 I think that again you can look at some of these regular season games and tear them apart because we are you know, we all like to watch these games and we want big takeaways to come out of it. But the reality of the situation is a one game in, you know, early March is just nowhere near the level of a seven game playoff series come June. And we're a little bit at a point in the NBA where the difference between the regular season and playoffs the gap's never been bigger in terms of difference, which is why for a lot of people, they, and to some degree, I do agree with the sentiment that the Celtics, it's great what they're doing in the regular season, but it is a different animal when you get into a seven game series against some of these other mentally tough teams. We've seen the Celtics lose two out of three Eastern Conference finals to the Miami Heat that Again, heat culture, a little bit of a cliche, but it is definitely true that they are a hard-nosed team. They're led by a hard-nosed leader in Jimmy Butler. Eric Spolstra's a great coach, and, you know, I think for the Celtics here, they should be the favorites, at least in the Eastern Conference. The fact that they're quite as far ahead of the Nuggets as they are, I think, is maybe a little bit extreme, but these are the two teams in the NBA that easily are the best chances to win the finals in my opinion i have just one team on the second tier that is the la clippers now they have not looked quite as great since their phenomenal two-month stretch that they had in december and january where their offense was the best in the league the thing is their defense still sort of stood out a little bit in terms of not looking great they have some individual defenders that you still have to have some level of faith in that they can ramp it up come the playoffs specifically talking about Kawhi Leonard and Paul George look James Harden at this point and losing Russell Westbrook for however however long he's out to definitely doesn't help that by any means I know that Russ is a very polarizing guy but he always gave the effort on the defensive end Harden I do just I think that one-on-one -on -one, he still gets abused and we saw that in the Lakers comeback last week where the Lakers were trying to pull Daniel Tice out on the perimeter Avita Zubats was out in that game it was either him or James Harden every single possession and working from there the issue with the Clippers I think on the defensive side of the ball still don't feel great about their size now Zubats Tice and Plumlee they're all fine players. They all hold very similar roles in terms of the offense. James Harden, of course, loves his centers. The pick and roll is very effective for him. And they definitely 
play a good style of basketball for them offensively, but I think that they can still get pushed around. And, you know, I think that the Clippers, again, I have them in a second tier by themselves. I think they are still a very good team, but I also do... There are more hesitations about them than I think the Celtics or the Nuggets. You also have to worry about them a little bit. Now, these tiers are more so, assuming injuries aren't a thing, but when you talk about the Clippers potentially winning the finals, you do still have to talk about the possibility of Kawhi Leonard or Paul George potentially getting injured. We just haven't seen them actually complete a playoff stretch together since they came to LA. James Harden, maybe not as much as of an injury thing, but he, you know, we've seen Harden disappear in playoff series as well. Now, he's the third guy on the team right now, so it's not quite as big of a deal if he isn't on his A game, but he also is, you know, the big time facilitator for them. I think Kawhi, again, not quite as great as he was earlier this season, but he's having one of his best offensive seasons of his career. Paul George has been struggling a little bit as of late, but he was also dealing with some injuries. And I think that there's real depth on this team. I love Norman Powell. I think that he should be a prime candidate for six man of the year. He gives you everything you could ask for on offense off the bench. You know, without the ball, with the ball, he does what he needs to. He's not asked to do all too much. But, I mean, he was a part of that Toronto Raptors championship team in 2019. Not that he was necessarily a prime guy for them. But he was on the roster. I think you can trust him with big-time minutes. Um, and again, the bigs are nice. The defense is what I worry about with them when it looks for a matchup. I mean, as it currently stands, they would be playing the Pelicans in a playoff series. And Pelicans would be interesting because they are a very physical team on both sides of the ball. We saw the Pelicans come back and beat the Clippers. It was a month or so ago, when Zion just started bullying the Clippers inside, getting to the rim anytime he wanted, had a big fourth quarter, and I just think that that's not the best matchup for the Clippers, and there's a couple teams like that. The Timberwolves are very physical and very good on defense as well, but I will say, uh, last night on the Clippers here, I'm not trying to be too negative on them or anything. They won one of those rock fights against the Timberwolves the other night on Sunday where both teams shot under 40%, both teams scored under 90 points, and the Clippers came out on top on that one. So that was a little bit, um, you know, it, it was a good thing to see from the Clippers there that they can win a little bit in different ways. And then the third tier that I have includes the Phoenix Suns, Milwaukee Bucks, Miami Heat, and Minnesota Timberwolves. Now, I will address some of these teams that I did not include in a minute, but as far as these teams, I think that th these are the groups with the ceiling that we can actively see. They are playing some of their best basketball as of late. I know I was just a little bit negative on the Suns in terms of the late game stuff with them, in the last segment, I do still think that that reigns true. That is my biggest concern with them. But you have to imagine Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, Brad Beal, if they're all playing at their best, they are definitely a very difficult team to play. I didn't talk about Yusuf Nurkic in that last segment where we talked about their game versus the Nuggets, where he fouled out with a couple minutes left in regulation there. Nurkic has been a huge revelation for them. He's another guy that he hasn't been very healthy down the stretch of the past handful of years, but he's having a very nice season, extremely effective on the boards. Now, I know there are some Suns fans that are not thrilled about the level of defense that he plays, but I think he at least counteracts that with being the rebounder that he is. And also, he's fourth on the team in assists, and we saw it last night when they were playing. He gets the ball down low, and when he needs to pass out, he just makes the right decisions. Now, he's maybe leaned on a little bit more than Suns fans would prefer in terms of making decisions. He's your center. He's not a Jokic-level center, of course, where 
He's one of these top passers in the league as a whole. You ideally take a little bit off off of his plate in that sense, but I do still think that he is a very nice player for them. And then, you know, their top seven guys are very solid. Again, injuries are a big concern with them, but Grayson Allen is having a tremendous season for himself. I know that he cooled down down the stretch of that Suns game last night, but he's around 50, 40, 90 this year. And then Royce O'Neal was a decent pickup for them as well. Bull Bull, the little bit of revelation that's going on there. I feel like I got to watch him closer to see what's actually going on with him. But definitely a Suns favorite there. Other teams here, the Bucks. I've talked about them tons on this show. I really think that the defense they're playing right now is encouraging as a whole. Undefeated coming out of the All-Star break, allowing under 100 points per game. That is nowhere near the level of what we saw from them earlier in this year. And they're starting to shape up into more of a contender by the day. I think that once they fully get on the same page here, you still feel like there's something that could be unlocked in terms of the Lillard Giannis two man game. If that happens, watch out. But they are definitely on a good pace as it currently stands. The Heat are a team, despite how bad they looked for. Now, the first half of the season, they are now getting themselves together as well. Jimmy Butler is finally caring about basketball. He's playing, and he is deadly, averaging 26 or so in the past month about that. I know, not great statistics on my part, but bear with me here. But I think that they are definitely finding themselves as well the terry rosier numbers are still maybe a little bit concerning he's his efficiency has just been really bad since coming to the heat but that's an example of something where if they can possibly unlock that it adds another dimension to their team tyler hero is somebody that a lot of people just wrote off this past offseason, but he can be a big-time scorer for them as well. For a team that, at times, obviously, a lot of the time they drag other teams into the mud and they play these defensive matchups, and that's sort of how they win basketball games. Now you have Tyler Hero ideally coming back for the playoffs. You have Bam, who is wonder, one of the most underappreciated players in the NBA in my eyes. And Jaime Hawkes is having an incredible rookie season as well. So the Heat are definitely real threats. And then last team I have here is the Timberwolves. They're a little bit fringe to me. Their defense is still really good. I know statistically they've taken some steps back in recent months, but I do still think that the defensive ceiling with them is there. It's the late game offense that sort of worries me a little bit. Very reliant on Mike Conley, and I like Mike Conley a lot. Um, it's just the looks that they get on offense in those crunch time minutes really aren't quite as great as you would want them to be. Anthony Edwards is tremendous, but he's still very young into his career. You have Carl Anthony Towns, who... We know the spacing that there is with him. We know he was an all-star this year. My opinion, Spona should have been over him, but that's neither here nor there. But I just don't think he can take advantage of mismatches the way that he really should. And, you know, they have some flexibility as well because if they want to go with more offense, they can take Gobert off the floor. They can put in Nas Reed as well. So they got different options. I just I don't know how many decision-makers with the ball that they really have at an elite level. And I think it leads to their offense getting a little muddied up in the end of games. So quickly here on the snubs. Now I almost put a tier four for the sake of this exercise. One thing I am personally working on is trying not to be too inclusive. Realistically, if the Knicks, Mavericks, Cavs, Sixers, Lakers, or Warriors won the finals... I would be surprised. And that's sort of how I did this exercise. Now, Nick's ceiling, if they're fully healthy, could definitely be in that realm, but they haven't been healthy, and it doesn't really seem to be getting much better from that perspective. 
if they had gotten to play the second half of the season all together, maybe they could have built up some momentum. But I think that it's a concern for them. Jalen Brunson just went down. Luckily, nothing too serious, but he went down this past weekend as well. The Mavericks defense is just brutal right now, and there are talks about Jason Kidd and his job security there in Dallas. Sixers, it's Embiid or bust, but even with Embiid, injuries are an issue. And the Lakers and Warriors, the sleeping giants that, you know, you could see it because we've seen it in the past, but I think we are just past the prime years of contention. But that is all I have for today. Thank you very much for tuning in to the GSMC Sports Podcast. Thank you very much to the GSMC Sports Network for allowing us to host this show. Just a reminder to please like and follow wherever you may be catching up with us. Helps us out a lot. Stay updated on this show as well as the rest of the great shows here at the GSMC Sports Network. And we will be back tomorrow at 2 o'clock. So we will see you guys then. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow. Feel like it's going to be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit. And the coffee ain't hit yet. Yeah, damn, ain't that great. I don't want to go.